Joining us now is Africa 54 Health correspondent Lino Madu. Lino. Hello, Vincent. Well, a new study shows that ovarian transplants are a safe and effective way for women who have had cancer to have their own children. Danish doctors offered the procedure to 32 women whose cancer therapy had left them at risk of infertility. Patients had their ovaries frozen before cancer treatment began. Their own ovarian tissue was then re-implanted once they were well. Ten women went on to have successful pregnancies. Though ovary freezing and transplantation is available in the UK, well, it is not common, partly because of concerns that transplants could carry cancerous cells. The study was published in the journal Human Reproduction. The World Health Organization says, with advances in medicine helping more people to live longer lives, the number of people over the age of 60 is expected to double by 2050 and will require radical societal changes. In a new report, the World Health Organization raises the alarm on the state of health of aging populations globally. The World Report on Aging and Health is crucial because populations around the world are rapidly aging. And we need to make sure that as we develop as a cohesive and equitable society that older people are a core part of that. We also need to frame how we can ensure that their rights are respected, particularly their right to health. Successes in dealing with childhood disease and maternal mortality are some reasons why people are living longer. But the report finds that there is very little evidence that the added years of life are being experienced in better health than was the case for previous generations at the same age. Alana Officer is Senior Health Advisor of Aging and Life Course Department with WHO. So the report tells us that populations are rapidly aging. But it also tells us very importantly that we are not necessarily healthier today than our parents and grandparents. Observers say some older people from more advantaged segments of society may be experiencing both longer and healthier lives. However, people from disadvantaged backgrounds, those in poorer countries with fewer resources, are likely to have the poorest health and the greatest need. Dr. Bird says realigning health systems to the needs of older people will be crucial in ensuring them a healthier life. Well, there's a lot of practical things that can be done, and that can be in the rich world or in the poorer world. For example, health systems need to reframe the way they look at an older person when they present, and instead of responding to each disease independently, they need to consider the person as a whole and identify what's the best way of improving their functioning. The WHO report rejects the stereotype of older people as frail and dependent. It says the many contributions that older people make are often overlooked while the demands that population aging would place on society are frequently overemphasized or exaggerated. The report stresses that, among other things, governments will need to develop long-term care systems that can reduce inappropriate use of acute health services and ensure people live their last years with dignity. Joining us via, via Skype from London for more on the subject is Claire Woodford, Health Policy Advisor at Help Age International. Claire, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. First of all, let me ask you, what is your take on the reports in terms of where we stand in caring for the elderly? Well, I think it's a, it's a very influential and it's a very important report and Help Age is enthusiastically welcomes the report because it embraces a lot of the messages that we've been putting out now for some time, such as that um, it takes a very holistic and positive view of old age. Um, instead of looking what, at what older people can't do, it looks, about, it looks at what older people can do and enabling them to live longer and healthier lives, which is great. Secondly, it uh, talks about the person person-centered care, centered care which is really important because we know that there is no typical older person that for sadly for a lot of people when they reach older age they do experience disease um, ill health uh, depression um, all those things but for, that's not typical and there are many older people now living healthy uh, long lives so in terms of framing the response it's as much about health and also care services but also transport, looking at the environment in which older people are living as okay. much as, as just a medical response. And also, I think we'd welcome the real push for 
data. Too often we know we don't know uh, the numbers of older people in uh, in countries because uh, population level surveys don't don't collect this information, and so older people become invisible, and therefore we can't respond to their needs. Okay. Now, preventing diseases is very critical in older people, as the report mentioned. Tell us about mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the steps. Um, I think it, it, perhaps it's more helpful to actually talk about what to refer to what we're talking about here. So largely we're talking about non-communicable diseases, which are involve diseases such as stroke, hypertension, diabetes, and heart disease. So diseases that have been real killers in the uh, Western countries, in the UK, in the US for some time, but the health systems and the preventative work has been put in place so that um, these are now tackled. In poorer, uh, lower and middle income countries, we know that there are not uh, the services in place, the medication, the health prevention work there to stop these, these diseases progressing as far as they can so they become killers. Okay, now let's talk quickly about uh, the priorities for HelpAge International, especially when it comes to addressing the needs of the elderly, the elderly in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Right, well, obviously addressing these non-communicable diseases is a huge part of our health and care strategy. Also very much working on, on HIV, which we know leaves so many people in so many families in Africa um, either orphaned and as a result of those children are being brought up in a lot of countries by their grandparents, which places a, a very big role as, as caregivers on older people. Um, also, we know that the very much connected to that, the the level of income that older people receive is not necessarily stable and in very, in very many cases lower. So we do a lot of work on um, campaigning for pensions and the social protection systems to make sure that older people have a, a minimum income to, to protect them and keep them out of poverty. We also do work on um, humanitarian cu countries and situations um, in which uh, countries are vulnerable to disasters and um, that kind of work. Okay, okay, Miss Woodford, thank you so much for joining us from London. Claire Woodford is Health Policy Advisor at Help Age International. She was joining us uh, via phone. And that's our Africa Health Report for today. Back to you, Winston. Well, and thank you very much, uh, Lino, for joining us today. Be sure to watch for Lino Mudu every Tuesday and Thursday for the latest health news in Africa right here on Africa 54.